Yo, what's good? Big Z here, and today I'm going to show you how to process your pianos to actually make them sound good. Here's what it sounds like before the processing. And here's what it'll sound like after the processing I show you in this video. So anyway, I was noticing with my mixing business that I run that a lot of the songs coming in had pianos, but they weren't processed very well. A lot of them don't have the proper processing on them to take away the harsh frequencies that you can find in different pianos. So first up, I'm going to show you an M1 piano because it's a piano sound that a lot of people use. And then after that, I'll use a more realistic contact piano. So I'll show you how I process both of those. So here's what we're starting with right here. So first of all, the M1 piano is actually mono. So the first thing I usually do is add some stereo imaging to it to make it a little wider in the stereo field. So I'm gonna just use Isotope Ozone Imager for that. It's a free plugin. So all I'm gonna do is check the Stereoize button and then increase the width. You don't want to overdo it because it can add some weird artifacts to the sound, but I think that sounded good. So now the two most important things with pianos are compression and EQ. So I'm going to do the compression first. This way some chords aren't louder than others and the dynamics of the piano are just sounding super tight. So I'm going to use FabFilter Pro C2 for this. So I like to start off just bringing the threshold down so I can start messing around with the other parameters. So under the threshold knob, you'll see this knee function. And if it's a soft knee, the compression is going to start working a little slower. And if it's a hard knee, it's going to start working a little faster, which is actually what we want for this piano sound. So to let the initial attack of the piano come through, I'm going to increase the attack. Another important thing we can do is mess with this hold knob. So we want the initial attack, like the first like five milliseconds of the piano to just be the same. We don't want anything changing in that first window of time right when the piano hits. And up here, I'm just trying to get a few dBs of compression, nothing too crazy. Now I'm going to mix in a little bit of the dry signal. So I'll toggle it on and off so you can hear before and after the compression. Everything just sounds a little bit tighter and more cohesive. So the next most important thing is EQ. So I'm going to open up an EQ right here. FabFilter Pro Q3 is definitely the best EQ because it's so visual. So there are a bunch of harsh high frequencies in this piano that we can zero in on and reduce. Also in a lot of pianos from like 800 to 1200 hertz, there's usually some muddy, annoying frequencies in there, so I'll check that area out too. So I'll do a before and after with this EQ. So 
So that cleaned it up a lot and now it'll sound better on different sound systems and different headphones and earbuds and things like that. So another thing you can do just to make sure all those harsh frequencies are tamed is use the OEK Sound Soothe plugin, which I have over here. So I like to use this setting called the uh, cheesy piano setting and it kind of just reduces some of those harsh frequencies that you couldn't all get out with the EQ. I'll make it more extreme at first so you can hear what it's doing. So I brought the wet mix down to 55% just so it's working a little bit. So it's a subtle difference in the mix, but it's definitely noticeable. Now, because we've been reducing some of those harsh high frequencies, I still want the high end of the piano to come through. So I'm gonna use FabFilter Saturn for that. So it's a multiband saturation plugin. I'm just gonna use this top part just to kind of brighten up the very high end of the piano. Now the two last things I'm going to add is a little bit of reverb to put it in a little space and then a little bit of delay too. The key here is to be subtle with it and not drown the piano in reverb or delay. So I'll open up Valhalla Vintage Verb for the reverb and I'm just going to go down to these room presets and see what they sound like. I'll put it about 20% and just scroll through some of the presets and see how they sound. When you're scrolling through, you can bring the mix up more so you can hear what it's doing a little bit better. I like this lively snare room setting. Now I'll add some delay after that. So I'm gonna use Sound Toys Echo Boy Junior, which is my delay of choice usually. So I'm gonna put it on an eighth delay. Um, I'll bring the mix down a lot, but at first so I can hear it, I'll keep it up. So I just brought it down really low where you can barely even hear that it's there. It just creates a little bit more space in the mix. So let's do a quick before and after all this processing. So I think that sounds a lot better and more balanced now. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with a more realistic sounding piano, a contact piano. So I'm just gonna copy this MIDI up and mute the M1 piano for now. Here's the contact piano that we're working with. It's called the Maverick. I'm actually gonna move the MIDI notes down an octave. This piano is already pretty wide in the mix, so I'm not gonna add any stereo imaging. So I'll just start off with the compression. That sounds pretty good for now. I'll move on to the EQ.
This one doesn't have nearly as many harsh high frequencies as the M1 piano, but I'll check out that mid section here to see if we can reduce anything. And to see if your EQing is actually making a difference, just toggle it on and off so you can hear which one sounds better to you. So it definitely sounds a little bit muddy down there around like 400 hertz. So I'm actually going to use the dynamic EQ for this. So that cleaned it up a lot. Now I'm going to add a little more brightness on the top end with FabFilter Saturn. Also check if OEK Sound Soothe does anything helpful. So I'll start with the same setting I had before. So that definitely helps clean it up a little bit more. Now I think I just want to add the exact same reverb and delay that I've already done to the other piano. I'm just going to go into the mixer here and copy them over. And this realistic sounding piano will sound really good layered with the M1 piano. can take off some of the high end from that contact piano so it's not competing in the high frequencies with the M1. So there you have it. That's how you process pianos to make them sit better in the mix and just sound better overall. It's all about being subtle with the different tweaks, being subtle with the compression. Um, taking out those harsh frequencies with the EQ, adding a little brightness with some saturation if you want to, and then just a little bit of reverb and delay to get it sitting right in the mix. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy this one, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.